Today, we're looking at this really nice EcoFlow portable battery power generator. Inside the package is this Delta 3 Plus. It came 50% charged, so you have to charge it up to 100% if you plan on using it soon. There's the car AC adapter cable. Plug this into your car's cigarette adapter. Plug this other end into the back of the EcoFlow and it will charge up. This thick AC core is 6 feet long. It is super thick, so you can charge the battery up to 15 watts. That means from 0 to 100%, this unit will charge up within one hour. That's really crazy fast. This is about 3 feet of DC cable. It plugs into the back to provide 12 volts of DC to your equipment. I find this is very useful to power up some of my LED lights. In the front, you got the power button. Press and hold it to power on. It's already on. Press the AC if you want to turn on the AC. Otherwise, be sure to turn it off or else the EcoFlow will drain to 0%. That's because when the AC is on, the inverter kicks in. The unit uses energy to convert battery power to AC power. It's really nice that the AC outlets are rotated all around. Three of them does not have ground. The other three does have ground prongs. Because they are rotated to different orientation, you can use these chunky power chargers. Plug them all in and they won't collide with one another. Here's another one. If you are a photographer, videographer like myself, then you'll definitely appreciate the design. Turn on the USB if you need to use the USB. There's two USB-C, two USB-A. They are all fast chargers. One of the USB-C is HID, H-I-D, Human Interface. I forgot what the D stands for, but basically if you plug this into your computer, then you can get all of the readouts and control this as well. Sadly, I was not able to use this port using the EcoFlow software as of this moment. The software that I install on Windows 11 does not even acknowledge it's connected to this Delta. There is a Linux variant software to read it, and I couldn't get that working as well. But luckily, this does have Bluetooth, so you can connect this to your phone using the EcoFlow app, and then control everything inside the app. Now, if you're into home automation like myself, I'm happy to say that it's compatible with Home Assistant integration over Bluetooth. So yeah, you're not stuck using their proprietary phone app. You can certainly use Home Assistant, at least for now anyway. On top, there is a fan input, and in the back, there's the fan output. It sucks air in from the front and pull all the way in the back to cool the unit. This is the legacy DC output jack. You can output DC using the cigarette adapter or using the uh, two barrel connectors. Pop this door open. Now you can charge using solar or using the car adapter that I mentioned earlier. You can also charge with two inputs of solar panel here. There's a big expansion slot that you can connect this to another battery pack to even last longer. And of course you can charge it up over AC with the included AC core. The size is pretty decent. Here is a 13 inch laptop for a size comparison from the side. Not too bad, right? It's not too big. It's not too small. It's just the right size. It is heavy, but pretty easy to lift and carry around thanks to the two built-in handles. The unit is shockingly quiet. You will barely notice the fan is on. Just for fun, we're going to connect the Delta 3 Plus to a solar panel. You can get the official EcoFlow portable panel for about $400, which I think is way overpriced. I got this 400 watt panel from Marketplace for about $50 brand new. Behind the back of this panel is the standard MC4 connector. You'll need an adapter to go from MC4 to XT60 connections in the back. 
By the way, if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing and liking the video. This lets YouTube know that my video is indeed helpful and would recommend it to others like yourself. There are two XT60 inputs. You can insert it into any slot you want. Add another solar panel if you need. The front display is showing about 27 watts of solar input. It is a little cloudy today and I'm not even angling the panel towards the sun. If this is a permanent install, never lay the panel flat. You want the heat to escape somehow and the rainwater to go somewhere. The Delta 3 Plus works fine out of the box. If you want to tweak some settings, then the app is one of the options. Download the EcoFlow app and create an account. Click on the plus icon at the upper right hand corner. Click on Add Device. Select your device. This is the Delta 3. Let's click on Reset. Now we need to reset the device, so we're going to power off. Press and hold the power button until the LCD screen lights up. With the double beep, let go of the power button. On your phone, check the box, press reset the device. Select your Wi-Fi name and enter your password. Notice that this will only work on 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. Click on Next. Select the space and click on Done. There are two styles. Choose whatever you want. This is a lot more detail, so I'm going to click on that and set this as current. For the input tab, we're not inputting any power whatsoever. That's why it's showing zero. There's no AC going in, no solar, nor DC going in at this time. For outputs, you can control the AC output, turning it on, DC 12 volts, turn it on, USB-C, turn it on as well, if you need. Click on the gear icon, the hexagon icon on the upper right hand corner for settings and preferences. We can rename the device. Click on confirm. Timeout is pretty useful. If we're not using any power, if we're not sucking any power, then we should definitely turn a unit off. Otherwise, it still consumes power. Here are all our options. For AC timeout, I'm just going to select one hour. Same for DC. Hmm, interesting. Screen brightness, you can select the front LCD status screen brightness manually. Wow, that's super bright. I'm just going to select Auto. I don't know how it can detect ambient light, but I guess it does somehow. Time Zone. I don't know why this would matter, but it's there. I guess it'll work in conjunction with the weather updates that you'll see later on. For input, you can change the speed. For instance, you can change the input from 1500 watts down to 1000 watts. I'm told the faster the charge, the more it will damage the battery over time. If you're not in a hurry to charge up to 100%, maybe dial down to 1000 watts. Let's look at charge and discharge limits. I definitely don't want the discharge limits to be zero. Let's stop at 10% or even 5% is good. You don't want to bring the battery all the way down to zero because that will kill the battery very fast. Charge limits. You can do 90%, but once in a while, you should definitely charge it to 100%. In the savings section, you have even more options, such as electricity rate settings. I'm in the United States. I'm going to select USD, and the rate is about 40 cents per kilowatt hour. Let's go into operating mode. Here, you can save even more with time of use, when to recharge the units, and when not to recharge from the grid. Storm guard is very interesting. If you live in an area with a lot of power outages, it will alert you to make sure that you charge your battery fully. Let's click on firmware. 
that's interesting that the current version I have is way behind. It is 1.49 and the latest version is 7.73 as of now. I'm not going to update it just because everything is working fine. Don't touch it. That's my philosophy anyway. Let's get this thing into Home Assistant. Go to this website. On the right hand side, scroll a little bit. Click on Releases. Go all the way down and download this zip file. When you open the zip file, you'll see this folder. Double click on it. Go into Custom Components. Double click on that. Next, jump onto your Home Assistant Network folder. Mine is at the Network, the IP address, and then the Configure folder. Go into the Custom Components of that and drag the EFBLE from the zip file into this folder. Now it's time to restart your Home Assistant. I'm going to go to Terminal and just command in HA Core Restart. If you don't have Terminal, it's okay. You can go into Settings, System, click on the PAL button on the upper right hand corner, and then Restart Home Assistant. Now let's go into Settings and then Integration, Add Integration. Type in EcoFlow, and there we go. This is the integration to add EcoFlow BLE. Discover the device, and that's great. Your EcoFlow user ID is actually a bunch of gibberish number. Don't try to log in with your email. To get that user ID, you actually have to log in using your email and a password that you use to set up the app. Once you log in with HA, then HA will provide you with the user ID. With the user ID, Complete it, fill it out, then go all the way down and click on Submit. Give it a name, assign an area if you want, and then click on Finish. Here are all of the controls that we saw earlier in the app. I'm going to click on the pencil on the upper right hand corner to rename it because I forgot to name it in the previous screen. Click on Update. You can change the AC charging speed from 1500 watts down to 1000 or 900 or whatever. There's the switch to flip the AC port on or off. Backup reserve. I have no idea what that is. Looks like I need to visit that GitHub link to read more info on it. There's the charge limit, 9% is what I have. The DC charging is for the uh, solar input or car charger input. Right now the max it will let you is 8 amp. You can take control of the DC ports in the back, flip it on or off. The discharge limit is at 5%. That's the same that I set in the EcoFlow app. Flip the switch for the USB to be power on or off. All of the switches to flip AC, DC, and USB ports on or off is very useful. For instance, if HA senses that nothing is connected, might as well flip everything to the off position to save power, to conserve power. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a bunch of sensors. So yeah, if you're not outputting any AC, go ahead and flip the AC power button off. The battery level is at 74.97%. Everything is zero just because nothing is plugged in at the moment. Just for fun, I'm going to charge up my phone. Right now it's plugged into the USB-A ports and it's outputting 14 watts. Not bad. Next, I'm going to charge it over USB-C to USB-C cable. All right, so the output power of the USB-C jumped to 10 watts, which is a lot more reasonable. That's good. You can monitor the cell temperature. For some reason, it's disabled by default, so let's enable that. Click on Enable, and then click on Update. Click OK. After waiting about 30 seconds, the cell temperature came back up, and now we're seeing it at 71.6 Fahrenheit. That's good. I would say anything over 150 Fahrenheit is very bad. Don't quote me on that. All right, hopefully you found the quick review setup and automation for this Delta 3 Plus useful. I'm curious what kind of automation you'll use this for. Please let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.